What a weekend we have uh, on the sporting front, uh, including in Gaelic football. And we're going to have some really good uh, provincial deciders. Uh, my beloved Galway welcoming Anthony Cunningham and Ross Common and uh, a fascinating, fascinating clash in Clonus uh, between Derry and uh, Donegal. I've been waiting for this Conor Gilligan, waiting for this gag for a while. A lot of Rory Gallagher fans in Donegal, but they might be fans of him on Sunday in Clonus. No, I suppose um, there was a clamour for change in Donegal when, when Rory had them just probably ready to pick, but there's no doubt what he's done in Derry has been remarkable. You know, he got them at a low wave and he has everybody buying in, eating out of the palm of his hand. And you see him on the sideline and it's been infectious and Derry are, are really reaping the benefits of that at the moment. I should clarify that that was Rory Gallagher, the singer I was on about initially. Because <laughs> <laughs> the other Rory oh. Gallagher can do no wrong. He can do no wrong, and I would imagine he can sing as well at the moment. Eamon O'Hara, how are you? Have we got Eamon there? Yeah, sorry, you just broke up the route at the wrong time, Johnny. How are you keeping? All good, my friend, how are you? Looking forward to the Connacht final? Yeah, yeah, I really am. In fairness, uh, it's been obviously a bit of a low-key one coming into it, whatever else. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be uh, going to be very, very interesting. Our, our good rest of going to kick on and beat Goy for the third time this year. Um, and obviously, Galway have got themselves in a position, obviously, going well. They've defensively well set up and uh, getting big, big uh, superstar names to come in and help them in their background and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll talk a bit about the Connacht uh, final and we'll talk a bit about uh, the Talchon Cup in due course. But uh, we'll go back to the Ulster final. Um, just kind of watching Derry the last day, um, I, I, I mean, I was amazed at how good they were, how confident they were. What has Gallagher done to turn them into this team that looks like it, it completely knows what it uh, is doing? Monaghan were more or less squeezed into submission, really, and suddenly I'd say there's some belief in the Oak Leaf County that you might do something this year. Yeah, there is. I think, look, what Rory Gallagher has done has been incredible. He's got a, the same group of players, and for the first time in a number of managers, he's got all the players that he wants available to him. Mm. Um, yes, there'll be arguably players that, that aren't in the panel that might be there, but at the minute, Gallagher's got all the players he wants. They're eating out of the palm of his hand. And the trajectory from coming out of Division 3 and the Division 2 and, and being a whisker from getting promotion, um, it did dampen the spirits a wee bit coming into the Throne game. But from the Throne game on, like they haven't put a foot wrong. They've blown Throne away. They've blown Monaghan away. And, and I know there was a lot of question marks at well. They conceded 17 points defending deep. But that wasn't the real case. They just didn't need to concede a goal. And they just saw the game out and they allowed... Monaghan a free kick and a free kick and a free kick and it made it look like it was closer than it was towards the end Is You speak about having all the players available and we saw the situation with Down this year um, is it hard in a county like Derry at times to get everyone kind of singing from the same hymn sheet and all uniting behind the manager because obviously playing inter-county Gaelic football is a serious, serious commitment It is, but Derry have had a particular set of issues over the last number of years that a lot of other counties didn't have to deal with You know, they had a slot deal contingent that were fighting for all Ireland club and all Ireland hurling finals in consecutive years. And it's no coincidence that backbone by Brenton Rogers, Chrissy McCaig, Shane McGuigan, when those players weren't available to Derry in Division 2 for them number of years, they dropped to Division 3. They weren't available in the next league champion. They dropped to Division 4. So the previous Derry managers have been unlucky. Uh, Rory has probably been, been on the luckier side that they have been available and have been bought into it. So... Um, he has all the players he wants. I think the pandemic has has helped in that he's got a group of players at an age profile who usually go travelling, usually do things that 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 guys at 21, 22 do after leaving college. They didn't have that. They completely bought into Derry and now the team is starting to reap the benefits of that. Do you think he has quite a defined kind of management style, Eamon, in terms of the way they play? Uh just interesting to listen to Con, Con it there, like, you know what I mean? You, you, I just think it's all to do with consistency and, and self-belief. And obviously getting promotion back to back to back is, is always builds um, a self-belief and a belief. And, and, and when players, when you've got a manager telling you this is going to happen and it starts happening, I think start they start believe. really, really trusting in that type of situation. And I think, I think last year for me, was the Donegal game where he brought them very, very close and obviously nearly beaten Donegal in the end. Uh, they they got huge confidence as a result of that. Now, obviously, they had a bit of a blip against Galway in the league this year, but I think they were always very, very close. So I think it was all really coming together quite well. And I, you know, if you weren't involved in football, you would have probably known that Derry were going to take a scalp this year. There's no doubt about it. And obviously, with Tyrone coming up first, 
I just believe that they got to Rome. I was just looking at some of the stats, like you know, in the first half against against Rome, they had 16 attacks and had 50 shots. Like that efficiency is absolutely massive. Like go away every time that you go into your own the opposition 45 and get a shot. Now they got nine scores as a result of that. But it's that that's the kind of their game plan. Let's get into the scoring areas and let's go away with an end product. Be it a wide or be it a score, but they were able to set up and we're safe as of when we're facing the next kick out. And I think that type of consistency and that's role is all about getting the ball, be efficient, get on the score sheet, step back and take control of the game again. Obviously, his game plan is get ahead early doors. And I think that's what he's what has impressed me most. And we we saw the college just chatting off air. You know, I think if they get a really good start, that's what well, both teams will really want that in the in the Ulster final. But I think if Derry get that, there's definitely an opportunity for them just to soak a bit of pressure. Now, Donegal may have better long range shooters. I think they'll be good at soaking that pressure and just get them on the on on the uh, on the break and just come away with a score every time. And so far, that has worked really really well for Derry and. Uh, you know, I would expect that that would be the same again. But we talk about Rory, his passion that he's shown. Um, you'd never think he was a guy from Fermanagh, but he just showed the passion. But he's completely bought into Derry, and you know they've they've embraced him, and you have to admire that. And you know it's always a tough place. You know, Connacht spoke about the history and and you know how things work and probably coming together for them for long periods. But it, they really, really now have stepped up because they have some exceptional footballers, as you alluded to there. I was so impressed with Rogers and McLeanness the last that they're like two walls, particularly against Ty- uh, Tyrone. And I seen them up close, and the, the ball just kept, you know, they were just cutting it out time and time again, and very, very comfortable in possession, and you know, driving out when they needed to go and score to play, to hardly coming on the sides and just kicking scores for fun. But they just have it, they just have it really, really right, and they're going into a final with. A lot more expectation on them. Will they be able to deliver with that? That's going to be the big question on the day. That's an interesting one, yeah, because obviously Rory's a footballer himself. He's the most beautiful footballer. You wouldn't think he would turn into this passionate, like amazingly passionate coach who's obviously so innovative in the way he thinks about the game. And Eamon makes a good point there as well, Conlon, in the sense that they always had Monaghan at arm's length. They got a very, very good start. Shane McGuigan's freeze and his kicks in general were keeping them at arm's length. And what's what's to happen per se, um, Eamon might postulate, what, what's to happen, Conlon, if, if Donegal start particularly well, which they will obviously be aiming to do both teams as we spoke of there both teams will be delighted if this is one nil nil at half time because the way the both teams set up it's not you're not set up to chase chase the lead here so I think both teams will be very conservative at the start the game may not take into life until the maybe even the last quarter um, I think Derry the one thing under Gallagher is that he's very consistent in his team selection through the league he has had 90% of the same people starting Really, only Nell Toner um, has come in and been any different, and that obviously was forced upon in some games with Emma Bradley's injury. So, is the same subs coming on at a very similar time? You know what they're going to do, and it's more like a case of Derry saying, "Well, say to Tyrone and say to Monaghan, well, come on, break us down, and, and we'll try and hit you on the break." I think Donegal will do similar, but as Eamon touched on, I think Derry, the former Gareth McInnes, um, you know, a club mate of mine, um, and I've played with him for many years. And this is the sort of form he's been capable of. You know, he, he went travelling a number of years and, and missed sort of bits and pieces for Derry, but he's really in, invested in, in what Gallagher's wanted to do. And, and you can see that Gallagher really believes in him. Gareth McInnes has been the fulcrum of everything that's been good about Derry. His defensive work, his turnovers, then his attacks. You know, he'd done the dirty jobs. He won the breaking ball in the Trone game when it had to be won. And when the game was won and Trone were down to 14 men, he was out of the game for anybody watching the TV, but that's because Gallagher wanted him to sit at the top of the day and not concede goals. So he's the man he trusts. And even in that, you're looking at Ethan Doherty and Paul Cassidy, Benny Hearn, they've had seasons of their lives. And mm. if they can replicate, if the lesser known Derry players can replicate the form of the, the throne in the Monaghan game, like they're going to be very, very hard to beat. But the one thing Donegal have is they have a massive diamond around the middle of big men. Donegal, are arguably playing with five midfielders. You know, if you take Murphy when he comes out, you know, you have Langan's a midfielder at club football, Thompson's a midfielder, you know, you have McGee, you have Hugh McFadden. So the game, I feel, will come down to the middle eight. You know, who gets the better there? Because both teams will sit in very defensively. Um, and especially Donegal after the Cavan game. The one thing they showed is that they left Brenton McCall hanging out to dry and Cavan took full advantage of that in the first half. When Donegal shut down the second half, they did get a wee bit better, but they'll have learned from that. So they'll have had a chance to see Derry and Donegal coming into that final. They weren't particularly convincing and again, Calvin, but they'd done enough. You know, you look at Patrick McBurdy, didn't have a great game, and yet he comes off a 1-4. You know, Michael Murphy does what Michael Murphy does. He, he dictates the terms as the play. 
you know, he comes in and out of it. And a lot will come down to those big battles and, and who gets the better of them in the matchup. So um, one thing Gallagher has showed is that he does tend to get his matchups right. If you look at the Monaghan game, he was bang on, where Bonte probably just didn't get it right on the day for one reason or another. Just getting on to Donegal, so I, mean, I think you've previously said it was time for Donegal to shit or get off the pot this season, and that kind of does sum it up in the sense of where they to to get to that next level and obviously go beyond this. Totally agree. It's it, it's coming down to you know let's look at the consequences of a loss. If if Derry were to lose this, would it be the end of the world for them? Absolutely not. They have a very very good year. You know they'll go into the qualifiers and they, they're capable of beating anybody there. Donegal lose this. You know is this the end of? Of Declan Bonner would be people calling for his head. You know, it's not another. They miss out another Ulster title. You know, the potential that the players that they've got there, the performance, the level, they'll go into the qualifiers probably low in confidence, and then somebody could pick them off. You know, it, there's lots of what ifs and maybes, but I think there's an expectation now that Johnny Gall has got another Ulster final. They have to really, really perform and 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 get another result out of it. I think they've got. I think it's t- ten out of the last twelve or thirteen uh, Ulster finals now. So. They have huge experience on this occasion where Johnny Gall is coming in with, or Derry's coming in with very, very little of that. And I think that'll be, it's all about the big occasion. You know, the Ulster final is a life, does take a life of its own. It's it's an occasion. You know, this will be the big challenge for, for Gallagher. You know, he's very emotional on the sidelines. Will there be a bit of spice along the sidelines? Absolutely. I think there'll be, you know, they, they, Derry will thrive on um, the turnovers and like, that's what they take life it's about the fist pumps and stuff like that that's where they really really sort of you know lift themselves and, and, and drive on that so you know going back to the question of Donegal I think obviously you know it's that big middle diamond area where it's going to come down to um, whether teams will decide that you know we'll cough up the kick out or will we put it down now Patton's quite good he can go short he can go long he can go extremely long if necessary you know on the flip side of that with Lynch you know he's he's also quite good on that but it's Will Derek Donegal be happier allowing up that kick out? If they need to do that, they can adapt and change and force that long kick out and make it into a bigger contest around the middle. Then it goes back to the matchups. Like, who's going to pick up McBrearty? It's probably going to be McCaig. They're looking at Murphy. You know, will Rogers go with him everywhere he goes? But Rogers is also that holding that 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 holding role in, in that full back as well. You see, if they pull him out, then that means a little more space for McBrearty inside and whoever's probably in there with them, be it, you know, might be. Um, it might be Conor O'Donnell or somebody like that that might be, you know, just you know coming on the loop all the time. So it'll be just interesting. The tactical, the tactic, the tactics will be very, very much key, and the matchups will be very, very will be very much key. But you know, you could have a guy that we haven't mentioned here that could be the man of the match. You know, that's that's the one thing about it. If, if, down to those fine, fine margins. Yeah, Gaelic football and off the ball is in partnership with AIB. Proud sponsors of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. And just on the game itself, Eamon, like, is it going to be as cagey as people might suggest? Certainly in the first half, or it'll be kind of like just kind of scrapping on in there and don't get into a position where you're chasing the game from both sides. You know, there's a there's a saying in football like you, you won't win the game in the first half, but you can certainly you can mm. certainly lose it. And I think that's what Der- Derry have done. They've won a lot of their games in the first half. They've got a really good lead and control the game from then on. And I think it'll be very very cagey. I think both will be there'll be nervousness about Johnny Gold. There's no doubt about it because the pressure and the expectation will be there. Derry will be coming in. They've built their own reputation now, so they'll be wanting to put in a performance. It'll be very, very much standard-based. Can we reach the same heights that we did against Tyrone, as we did against Monaghan? And if they do, it'll be a long day for Donegal. I've no doubt about that. But it's about getting the scores on the doors. And I think, you know, you look at you look at Derry, if they're efficient, if they're going away with scores constantly and, you know, sitting back, they may frustrate, they may frustrate um uh, Donegal more than what Donegal will do to them if if if, if that's the right way of putting it. Um, but for me, it, the key man would be Murphy on Sunday. You know, he was he's key to everything what Donegal the, what Donegal will do. And are they able to shut him down? Will somebody else come in? Will Langan come in? Will McGee come in and do a really really good job and contribute on the scoreboard like McBrearty will need to really step up. Ryan McHugh will have to you know drive forward as per usual and get a couple of scores. So there's a lot more what ifs and maybes. But I think for me, it'll be in that, that diamond area that's going to be the, 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 the key. But in terms of caginess, there's no doubt about it. It could be a doer affair. I'm really looking forward to it. But it could be those type of ones where we'll just be sitting back on the couch and sort of folding around to know somebody really, really go for it at some point. So I think a goal early would be great. It'll, I think it'll give life to the game. It'll get the crowd behind it. And it'll draw one team out and there'll be no doubt about it. It'll be very, very much in the 
have to piss it down the yeah, and Con- it's it's mad to think that Derry haven't won the Ulster Championships in 98. I remember I was at the Galway game that year and to think that uh, our whole lives ahead of us haven't won a championship since. There must be some buzz in the county. I think you could kind of feel that from the TV against Monaghan that there was a hell of a Derry crowd in the ground as well. Uh, yeah, look, there was. And like obviously going back to that Galway game, like Derry had won the National League against me that year and, and we're at a stage where there was a team capable and to be honest that Galway defeat a lot of stuff broke up after that mm. management changed and there was just a there was just a clamour for change whenever things were actually going well and, and then there was a few wee incarnations where there was another all in semi-final through the qualifiers um, under Mickey Moore and lost to Kerry so there was teams in that period capable of winning they came up short um, I was involved in a fair few of them and like Tyrone and Armagh came at that time and they sort of carved a number of them you know in Derry and like in 2011 in the final you know, Donegal got the penalty, which set them apart and it kept McGuinness pretty much in the job the next year. And then you see where that went. So there was very fine margins, but Derry have been unlucky in that decade where even when they weren't in Division 1, they kept drawing Division 1 teams. But the buzz is back big time in Derry. You know, you can't get over Neil's uh, Derry jersey mm. for loving their money. Red and white to his. They've sold, I think, thirteen or 14,000 tickets, which is unheard of because like I, I remember in days where they had 500 tickets sold for an Ulster Championship semi-final whenever things were low ebb. So, look, Derry's going really well and I think, as Eamon touched on, in some ways it's actually a bigger game for Donegal. Derry need an Ulster, there's no question about that. It's just the county's crying out for something to get behind. But for Rory Gallagher, a defeat isn't the end of the world. He's chucked them in a, to a good place and the way the qualifier draws worked, he could be sneaking into a quarter-final there again, even in the worst-case scenario. But that's in nobody's mind in Derry. We are just buoyed by the hope and the possibility and the, the, the what-ifs that we might we might be Ulster Championship on Sunday. And you know what? It's been a long time from we've been in a final where it's been a, a realistic possibility. But, you know, Derry are in a good place. And again, it comes back to do they get the matchups right? If they can keep Michael Murphy quiet, you know, I've no doubt McGee will do a job on, on McGrady. Um, but it's the Langans, it's the, you know, it's, it's Jimmy Brennan has been in the form of his life, you know, can he be stopped? So, there's a lot of fires to put out, but I think the momentum with Derry's there, I think they're well capable of doing that. Jeez, Eamon, I wouldn't like to be sitting beside Connell if they win the game Sunday. I'd say the man will be absolutely going bananas. <laughs> He's going to be digging out that that, that, that Derry jersey, that, that baggy one that he used to be wearing way back in the day. It's a bit tighter now, though. It's a wee bit tighter than it used to be. You took the words out of my mouth, you got in there ahead of me. <laughs> it, it is mad, like, looking back to the to the 90s, when Galway won the All Ireland in 2001, the paper the next day was saying Galway are going to dominate Gaelic football now for a good while. I don't think they won a game in Crow Park for 16 years. So in, in that context, Eamon, um, this is a kind of a, I suppose, a renaissance. We're going back to the Parik Joyce era of 2001 as well, when he scored the 10 points against me that day. But he's now the, the leader of this Galway team. Coming in against Roscommon, who obviously are managed by Anthony Cunningham, has a lot of grievances about the way he was thrown out of the hurlers back in the day as well. Started off managing Roscommon hurlers. He's now managing the inter-county team, hoping to win another kind of championship with them. Hoping to beat Galway for the third time this year. Although I do kind of wonder, the shadow boxing might be over now in that regard when they meet in Pear Stadium. You know, there's an awful permutation. Actually, when I was going back doing a little bit of research for this one, like it's, 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 it's hard to believe that you know Galway haven't won a kind of title in Galway for 13 or 14 years. Uh, they're in their fourth comic title in a row now and haven't won the last three. Um, Porrick had a very good start. I suppose he had a very good four or five months at the start of his campaign and then obviously uh, COVID came in and it kind of broke up the momentum and then last year wasn't, you know, they never got to the level at all. And then this year they started exceptionally good again. They came with a real freshness. Um, they've got there are a lot of their injuries sorted out. Um, uh, and then they come and they play Roscommon and they play a weaker team after after actually going up to Derry and dismantling Derry mm. you know, to, to, to concrete their position in, in Division 1 for next year. They play a weakened team. Or that was the narrative that we were hearing. It was a weakened team. He made seven changes then for the length, for the league final. And I was actually doing commentary on that, on that league final. And, you know, Roscommon just bet them, you know, back to back and within six days. And it, it was it was it was disappointing. From me looking at it, I thought Go would offer an awful lot more. But at the same time, you know, whether they had an eye further on down the road, down the road, obviously so. And you know, the, the game against you know, probably the one game we can really talk about is that you know Go and Mayo game uh, that was in Castle Bar, where you know Go did exceptionally well. They took control the game early on. It was level at half time. Mayo went a point up for the first time in the game, and then you know Go really controlled the game. They got six in a row to kind of concrete their 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 dominance and. 
you know, if there was another two more kickouts, I'd say Mayo could have won that game because they were going around the rack. So when you compare that lead into it, it's all about getting to a final, there's no doubt about that, but nothing is perfect. But the only good thing you have is that you have the likes of Walsh, Fit, Comer, Fit, and and, and Paul Conroy. And Paul Conroy is the man this year. In fact, like the way he's playing, he's basically Stand. the whole fulcrum of the team. Absolutely. I, I played against Paul in my, my latter stages and, you know, he was, a, he was always a strong, robust type of player, but, you know, he always kind of played in between the 45s. He might have been playing on the 45 at the time, but in the last number of years, he's got his diet, he's got his fitness to an absolute you know, a level of, you know, like Anshul levels. And, you know, he's 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 reaping the rewards now and his accuracy is the second to none, scoring five in the league final, three or four against, against Mayo. And, you know, just that real consistency of performance and he's key for Galway. That's, there's no doubt about that. So, you know, there's no doubt about a Roscommon. We'll have get hold on Harney and, and, and Eddie Nolan there around midfield. A good forge partnership, I must say. Both of them working really hard. Both of them can take, you know, key men out of games or dominate them at times. So there's no doubt about that, that, you know, he'll be up against it again the next day. Um, but I just think for Galway, if you know, Kevin Walsh got a little bit of criticism about the way he played, they, they have, they have um, Dylan McHugh and Malloy playing in as two sweepers. When you have to play Sean Kelly at fullback, I think Sean Kelly's an outstanding footballer. Mm. Playing him at fullback, mm. it's, to me, it's like plugging a bit of a hole. Mm. And I, that's where I would worry. I mean, you compare what Roscommon have in terms of their forward line, Smith, two Smiths, Martha Cox. They've also, uh, according to us, that um, one, uh, Jeremy Martha won't be starting, but he'll be coming in like he did in Leinster in the, in the, in the league final. He'll be making huge impact. That's where I would just worry a little bit for Galway, you know what I mean? Will they be exposed in that forward line? That's that'd be that's, or in that defensive line. I think that's where the big question for Galway. Obviously up front, very, very good. So but it'll come down on an awful lot will come down on the day and where where will the dominance where the, the dominant areas will be? You know, the styles of play are a little bit differently. Obviously, Galway will have, you know, Connor Gleason uh back in goal again. I think um Connor Flaherty was there and I think he's still injured, so they're still gonna go along with the kick out in that situation. So you know, there's lots of what ifs and maybes. It's going to be very, very tight. And I think this will be the one game out of all the finals probably come down to could go to extra time. Yeah, and Con, what's common, just do not fear Galway. And Nikonian will know them inside out. And it just feels like a game that is very, very hard to call. What do you make of it? Yeah, very much so. And I think uh, I think everyone was right. You know, the, the, the Derry game and, Gal- and the Galway game, Galway, Derry won the breeze and it was a... He, Enormous breeze, you couldn't, you had to be there to believe it. Derry won the toss and opted to play against it, and Galway just went to town and the game was over at half time. Had Derry have taken the breeze, arguably Derry could have won that game. That's how significant it was, but they didn't. Then obviously Galway didn't need to do much again Russ Common after that, and that was it over. They give Russ Common the win there. Then Russ Common believed that they could beat them in the league final and did. So if it were me, I'd have been looking to keep my foot on Ross Common's throat right through that. They have given them the oxygen to be in this, and this could come back to bite them. Like in terms of Ross Common's forward line, like there's no doubt. Look, you know the Connor Coxes, you know then the Smiths, you know they had 18 scores from play in their last game, mm. and sorry, the 18 points from play and 11 different scores. So they have the stuff to bother a Galway defence that has been flaky, has been. Very, very temperamental. They had definitely Galway made huge strides towards putting in a defensive system that could frustrate Mayo for long periods. But whenever the heat came on and Mayo came on strong, the defensive structure just didn't really allow for for anything that luckily was going to repel them in the way that that maybe Derry's did um, at times against Monaghan. So I think the matchups will be spot will be spot on here, but it'll be more a case of well, do they go with two sweepers? You know, and if that's the case, it means they don't trust their players one on one, and it may be enough to win a kind of championship. But that's not going to help them when they get to Pro Park, and because what they'll need is their forward line clicking. You know, the Shane Walshes, you know, the Comers, and uh, you know, the Paul Connor. The, if he can have a, a decent game or two now, he's nailed on for an All Star. That is how important he has been this year. But I think it comes back to which forward line gets the most scores. I think Ross Common probably have more scores in them if the game is a nice, loose, open game of football, but I don't think Galway can alert. It'll be completely against Joyce's DNA for how he started this job, but I think he is probably growing into the realisation that if he wants to win something bigger 
than a Connacht title. He'll not do that conceding 18, 19, 21 points when it comes to Crook Park. He has to shut down the hatches. He has to show that there's a way to beat Ross Common, and he has to do it with a real defensive game. I don't think he can go toe to toe with Ross Common well, in this one. On that aim, and I, I think Con's getting to a very the crux of Galway football here for maybe the last ten years. Like uh, for me, Galway football has massively struggled to adapt to what became a defensive game. They were kind of halfway between both. They didn't really know what they were doing. Maybe. You know, maybe Kevin Walsh didn't fully trust uh, the defenders to actually play an expansive game. What do you see in Porrick Joyce? Has he evolved as a manager since he took over? Because obviously, what a footballer he was, but at the same time, you have to box clever as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, you, we've often heard that, you know, a manager, his hand, his fingerprints, his handprints are all over. And if it's, if it's hard work and determination and, you know, real positive attitude and, you know, Porrick is one of the best forwards I have ever played against and played with and seen, you know, in, in, in the history of, of Gaelic football. But then you compare Rory Gallagher. Both of them were flair footballers, but both of them are obviously smart enough to know and, and understand football enough that, you know, we have to score enough, but we also have to defend really, really well. And I think Porrick went out with the attitude that they were going to play traditional goal with football at the start and realised this is not going to work now. You know, teams are too smart. They're all about retaining possession and punishing, punishing if you do not get in product on the other end. So, Obviously, he adapted. You know, he has dropped the two guys in there. Interestingly enough, he's brought in, um, uh, I believe he's brought in Ron Agar, Ron Dunn, you know, these guys to talk to the players about, mm. you know, the motivational side of him, you know, creating intensity. And, you know, that that works. So, obviously, he's believing that his style of football is good. He's obviously trying to bring in the right positive attitude and the, the winning mentality that he's trying to get into this group of players. Because, as you said, they haven't won a whole lot. Obviously, Kurt Finn has been extremely uh, um, successful at club level, but in, within in the Galway setup, it hasn't really happened for them. So, Horik is open, and I think that's the one good thing about it. He's willing to change. He was willing to change his, his background team, bringing in Keane O'Neill. So, that adaptability is, is very, very much a, a, an important thing for him. Going back to what Conlet said there, Mayo had 40 attacks against against mm. Galway, mm. and they, they weren't deficient enough. For a to get 40 attacks, they'll put 20 plus yeah. points on, on, on goal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, absolutely. That's, that's, that's the black and white of it. Um, and that's where the dominance in that middle, I know we talk about the diamond quite a lot, but that's going to be so, so important. You're going to have to be really, really efficient in there if Crow are going to be successful. Because we can see if if this was a Mayo Roscommon game, we'd be talking Mayo going to win this. The fact that it's Roscommon Galway, and you made the, the point, Johnny, yourself that. Ross Common are absolutely 100% convinced that they're going to walk up here stadium and win the next day. Mm. They just, that's what they have in their locker. That's what they believe. And they'll deliver if they're allowed. So I think Porrick needs to be very efficient. When you go back to the caginess of the Ulster final, go, we need to control the pace of this game. They need to, you know, maintain the ball for long periods. If they go toe to toe with Common, I think Ross Common will put them off. Yeah. And even going back just on that to, to, the, to the game where, you know, the last number of games, the Galway kickout has been put under pressure, mm. and it, you know, it's changed completely. So, whenever the heats come on, that kickout right across the D, it hasn't worked, and they've been putting themselves under serious pressure. And the default position then is go long around the middle. So, I would expect Ross Common to try and really test that because if they can get into the kickout, it gives them a serious platform because if they have the ball in that quarter, you know, they will do the damage. I, I just slight concerns for Galway if things are tor- going against them how will they be under pressure in the second half because I'm just not sure mentally are they um, fully there and I think Roscommon will be will be well up for in that regard and they'll be well coached let's uh, put our heads on the block here I have a feeling what you're going to say here Connor, but who are you predicting for both games yeah but look I'm actually I'm actually going to go with Galway um, and as far as they really need to win this um, they've got out of Mio's shadow for a wee bit here and they can put themselves in a really good position. This is do or die for Galway. Um, they're never going to be any better prepared. They have thrown the kitchen sink at it from the backroom team, from Keen O'Neill, from all the stuff they have brought in. And they haven't done this just to win a kind of title. It has to be more. They're not there yet, but this will be a stepping stone. For me, I think Galway will make it a lot uglier than Porrick Joyce would want and that the supporters would probably like and accept, but they'll take a kind of title at this point. In Ulster... I think it will be a very edgy game. I think for people that are looking a high-scoring, kicking game, they're not going to get it. I think ball retention will be the key. I think kickouts will be really strategic. It'll be massive. You know, you could have teams pushing up heavy at times and then conceding kickouts at other times. Yeah. Look, I think momentum's with Derry. 
Um, I'm going to, my heart's going with Derry. I really hope Derry win it. Um, my mother's from Donegal. I really glad when Donegal Donegal get, I'm really glad when Donegal win any other time. But at this stage, Derry really need this because the Miners are in the final before it. The under 20s were all Ireland champions last year. There's a crest of a wave. There's something good happening in Derry football. But for players to commit their future to a county setup in the modern era where it's five, six times a week, you need something to hang your hat on. Jim McGuinness got him at Donegal in 11, 12. I think if Rory Geller can get an Ulster Championship here, he has got them now for another three, four years and the skies would be the limit for them. So I'm going to go with Derry. But it could take extra time. And God forbid penalties. <laughs> <will> not. <laughs> you said your heart's with Derry. I'd worry for your heart now if I went <sighs> extra time then. Yeah. Eamon, what about yourself? I, I'll, for, the, for, for me and Connacht, I, I'm going to go too with, with Galway. I just don't see... Go, we've been bet three times and they're too, they're too passionate and too proud but then and the laws of probability is also you know yeah. what I mean it's not ta- I'm not looking at that tactically I'm just saying in terms of how it would work we know Pear Stadium there'll be a gale force breeze even though it probably would be dry it'll still be a strong breeze there it's going to have a huge effect on the game unfortunately so it's who's going to be able to adapt the best but I think there is something in Galway I think if they if they are going to be serious it's the first, first final in a row so they need to win one there now this is going to be huge for them but that brings its own pressures but again it goes back to performance and standards and I know that they're trying to sort of get that winning mentality so I, I just think it'll be it'll be a goal with very very much in a very very tight game with just about in Ulster I'm going to go to any goal I just think that experience I think I think Derry are very close and you know if we, truth be told Derry could dominate football next year from then on I just think this one they might just fall short because there's all of a sudden there's a wave of expectation behind them and when it came down to it in the league in the league final for them to get promotion you know, you go back to that 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 error of going with the wind or going against the breeze. Just a poor decision, and I think there's expectation there. I just think it'll be a tough one to deliver. It'll be it will be huge for Derry to win to beat to beat Tyrone Monaghan and, and Donegal. It'll be an un- unbelievable year for them. I don't know that they are yet. They are very close, but I don't think they're there yet. So for me, it's going to be Donegal. Just very briefly, in in terms of uh, the Talchin Cup, um, Sligo obviously facing London on Saturday. Um, obviously started off to little fanfare uh, last weekend or whatever but um, what do you make of it and if you were playing would you? how would your motivation be for it if you were in the Sligo panel on sun, on Saturday? I, you know Sligo it, it hasn't really happened as well as we thought it would for Tony and the, and, and the response he's got with the Sligo set up it's, it's obviously always going to be difficult when you've got Roscommon Galway and Mayo dominant in the area you know it's not from lack of effort and the players are, are putting a huge shift in but it hasn't really happened for them at at any stage, obviously, with the Tartan Cup here now, London are coming in. I think, I think London obviously, you know, listening to their, you know, to, 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 you know, preparations before the before the, uh, in the league and coming into championship, you know, they've gone quite well in the league, and I think they'll have looked at this now and said, if we can win one game in the Tartan Cup, it'll be a huge bonus to them. So they're coming over here, nothing to lose, absolutely nothing to lose. I know Slide of a number of injuries and at this present moment in time and things not going well. They had a couple of challenge games, just just struggling to really have a, a united front. And I think London could really test them. And I'm you might be surprised at that, but you know, Sligo, I would I would expect if there's if there's any heart and belief and desire in this group, they have to perform now and get a result here and and, and grind out results in this Talton Club. There's there's no reason why Sligo cannot go and grind the results right to the final here. There's no doubt about it. But they have to deliver, not rely on one or two guys. It's a consistent group, uh, a group effort. So for me, I think Sligo will just shade it on this one. But they're, 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 you know, the Talton Cup as a whole, I'm just I'm underwhelmed by it. I won't lie to you. I just think there has been very very little talk. Um, you know, you know, there's 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 four provincial finals here. There's, this weekend, and I hear more about the about uh, the Heineken Cup final rather than our our uh, my sport, which is GEA. So, you know, I think the media and, and not so much, and it's not the media. So, I think the GEA as a whole really haven't, you know, promoted GEA as much as it should. And you know, we're in half a year. I know there's an awful lot of talk about it at this present moment. You know, we we're a split season. It's now and we're still in May. And we're <coughs> in the provincial finals. I know we're probably maybe two three weeks ahead, but. It seems to be very, very flat. The, the whole buzz about it just doesn't seem to be there whatsoever. And uh, you know, obviously, apart from the likes of Limerick, who are going playing Kerry and Derry, there's huge excitement there. But everywhere else just seems to be a little bit flat at the present moment in time. So I think overall, football is is at a low ebb. So the Talent Cup is just we're fulfilling fixtures at this present moment in time, Johnny. Thanks for your time, lads.